Every week, there are several IFR-VFR conflicts. There is some misunderstandings out in the field. Who can help us debunk these myths? and avoid. You think somebody is flying under those conditions and they're going to separate themselves. We can just ignore them because why the VFR? They're on their own. Seeing and avoid is a, an integral part of our industry, you know, but it's not the holy grail. Pilots are responsible to see and avoid traffic. Well, two things have to happen. I've got to see the traffic first in order to be able to avoid it. It's really helpful to have another set of eyes. Most people think that they're not allowed to vector a VFR aircraft. You're not allowed to issue a turn or issue an altitude to a VFR aircraft. There's some misunderstandings out in the field about what you can and can't do. Can you turn them? Can you not turn them? Can you issue an altitude? Can you issue any other sort of instructions? And the answer is yes, you can. I'm always appreciative when somebody calls traffic for me because that's a potential threat. Most of the time, it's not going to be an issue if I need to change altitude, stop my climb, stop my descent at a certain altitude to let another airplane go by. Actually, I think that's in my own best interest. VFR tends to fall towards the bottom of the priority list. You can drop them down a rung. It's in the 71-1065. When it looks at IFR and VFR, it doesn't you know, distinguish between the two. It doesn't say between IFR aircraft, it says between aircraft. Issue the traffic, issue the traffic alerts, issue the safety alerts. Treat them like you would any other aircraft and help avoid those collisions because that's what our job is.